All right, welcome back to our Unit 7 notes. This is going to be Unit 7 Air Pollution, Section 7, Acid Deposition. We'll have one more video after this, and then you will be all done with your Unit 7 notes for this unit, or your notes for this unit. Um, so when we talk about acid deposition, there's actually two types of deposition. There's wet deposition and dry deposition. Um, wet deposition typically meaning you have to have water, like rain, snow, and fog. And then dry deposition happens with aerosol particles and gases. So where does acid deposition come from? It comes from natural and anthropogenic sources. We look at nitrogen oxides, which would be nitrogen monoxide, uh, nit dinitrogen oxide, and nitrogen dioxide, as well as sulfur oxides like sulfur dioxide and sulfur monoxide. Remember that these two can eventually, the, the nitrogen oxides and the sulfur oxides can eventually in the atmosphere form nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So where do nitrogen oxides come from naturally? Hopefully you guys can remember back when we talked about the nitrogen cycle, but they come from lightning and microbes, nitrogen fixing bacteria. Sulfur oxides naturally come from volcanoes. Remember the sulfur cycle. As far as anthropogenic sources, there are many for nitrogen oxides, including vehicles and coal burning power plants. With sulfur oxides, coal burning power plants is really the main source. Now, when it comes to acid deposition, the biggest risk comes for, to the downwind communities, and especially when we're looking at the United States, thinking about our prevalent wind coming from west to east, the east is going to be at more risk, and that's because the acidic gases like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are released in the atmosphere. The wind then carries it across and where it combines with the water to then dissolve and form acid rain as it comes down. The acid rain can uh, kill plant life and pollute rivers and streams and erode the stonework. So some of the harmful impacts, acidification of soils and bodies of water, which can obviously harm plant life. It can also corrode human-made structures. In this image here, you can see this statue that has been degraded away, plant life that has died off because of an acid rain, too much acidic soil, and fish that die off because of a highly acidic um, source of water. Now we'll watch this video to look specifically at what acid rain can do to your body. We'll watch it in class, but if you did not watch it in class or you just want to watch it again, the link is right there for you. And of course, you can open this link in PowerPoint as well. Now there's regional differences in different soils and bedrock. So as far as um, worrying about acid rain, it's going to be different in different areas. But limestone is actually the way we can neutralize acid rain. Um, because it has a buffering ability. The calcium carbonate will actually help to uh, reduce the impact of the, uh, of the acid rain. So the calcium carbonate can actually dissolve, which creates calcium and carbonate ions. The carbonate will combine with the water and have a transfer with the carbon to make carbonic acid, which eventually will combine to form water. If you guys remember, carbonic acid breaks down into water and CO2, so carbonic acid always breaks down into water and CO2, and this is an important uh, process when we talk about um, ocean acidification as well. So this is a solution that has been used in many places like West Virginia to dump limestone into streams to basically reduce the impact of acid rain. Um, the problem is still an issue, and in West Virginia, where they have a lot of coal burning, they have had to add limestone into streams to help prevent the negative impacts of the acid rain. So according to the AP, the Associated Press, the officials have discovered that a few inexpensive truckloads of sand a year to uh, neutralize as much acid rain and snow as liming stations that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sand treatments have turned more than 50 formerly fishless streams into thriving brook trout fisheries. Um, also in the Charleston Gazette, the swift waters of Laurel Creek ate quickly into the Volkswagen-sized mound of gray sand. Within minutes, most of the pile had disappeared, carrying downstream to fertilize an otherwise infertile watershed. So this is an example of using limestone, the calcium carbonate, to help reduce the impact of the acidic water. Um, just to give you a little bit, another image to see where the um, acid rain can come from. Nitrogen oxide can come from the into the atmosphere, also acid fog, and then it transforms into 
sulfuric acid and nitric acid if it's the sulfur oxide coming into the atmosphere these can come from uh, industries they can come from agricultural sources and they can come from vehicles the wind will then bring them across the sulfuric acid and the nitric acid the windborne ammonia ammonia gas and some soil particles will new can sometimes neutralize the acids and form a dry sulfate and nitric salts that causes the dry acid deposition where the gas and particles of the sulfate fall to the ground and you can also get wet acid deposition where the sulfuric acid and nitric acid dissolve in the rain and the snow and then eventually form in the uh, different lakes so area lakes that have low limestone become acidic and then lakes that have a lot of limestone become buffered so they're no longer um, highly basic so this image just shows you some more of the pathways of the acid rain and how it can leave and then eventually get back into the atmosphere and that brings us to the end of our acid deposition unit or section for this unit our last video will be all about noise pollution